Welcome to our online Sunday School. Let's start our worship together today by praying to the Lord God. So hands together and eyes shut. Dear Lord, our God and loving Heavenly Father, we come and uh, thank Thee for this uh, opportunity to come and to hear Thy word and to worship Thee. Uh, Lord, we uh, pray uh, that uh, You would help us to put out of our minds things which might distract us, the other things that we've been doing or um, that we will do. Lord, we pray that we would spend this time uh, with thee and thinking um, about thy word. Lord, bless us through it, we pray, and help us to understand. We ask all of these things in the Lord Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, this afternoon we have uh, a hymn to sing, which is, There is a green hill far away. reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, and starting the reading from verse 31. It is also found on page 916916 in your Sunday School Bible, if, um, um, you need help finding it um your um parents uh, can help you uh, but the words will appear on the screen and after that they mocked him they took the robe from him and put his raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Um, uh, him uh, they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto the place called Gagotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, 
he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots, and sitting down they watched him there and set up over his head the accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the, the cross. Like, likewise, also the chief priests, mocking him, with the scribes and elders said, He, he saved others, he, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, we, and we will believe him. He, he trusted in God. Let him, him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Um, we will hear a little bit more on uh, the actual death of the Lord Jesus in our lesson. As we come to pray, put down anything that will distract you, close your eyes and put your hands together. Let's pray to the Lord God. Lord God and loving Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your safekeeping of us. We thank you especially for keeping us and helping us throughout these difficult times with this pandemic. Thank you, Lord God, for our homes and our families. And thank you, Lord, that from tomorrow we will be able to return to school. We do pray, Lord God, that you would keep us safe in school and all of our teachers as well that you would keep them safe from the virus. Lord God, help all of those who are seeking to um, complete the testing and put safety measures in place. We pray that you would guide them and help them. And we pray, Lord God, that you would help us with our learning. Help us with the things that we are anxious about. Help us to catch up with schoolwork. We pray, Lord God, that you would bless our teachers who must be tired and strained as well from all that has gone on, and that you would give them strength and energy. And we pray, Lord God, most of all, that you would comfort us in our hearts, knowing that our God is almighty and all things are in your hands, that we do not need to be afraid. Help us to know these truths in our hearts and to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and that all our hope would not be on the things of this world, but our hope would be in him. Lord God, we also thank you for the Sunday school and we pray that more children would come. We pray particularly for our school friends, that you would keep them safe and that you would help them. And Lord, that you would open up opportunities for them to hear about the Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, for wisdom for ourselves as we grow older in all of our life choices. And we ask as well for wisdom for our government and the decisions that our government um, need to make and the choices that they make for us, that you would guide them and keep them and most of all lead them, Lord God, to 
an understanding of your word and faith in the Lord Jesus. We ask all of these things in his precious name. Amen. Good afternoon, children. I want to speak to you this afternoon about a picture that King Solomon uses. And he used a picture to show us the need to think about our souls. Solomon was very wise. He asked the Lord God for wisdom and the Lord said he would give him anything he asked. He chose wisdom as what he needed to be able to take care of the Lord's people and look after them. And the Lord God blessed him, gave him wisdom beyond anyone else apart from the Lord Jesus. And because he'd asked for wisdom, he also gave him long life and peace and prosperity. But Solomon, towards the end of his life, wrote the book of Proverbs. And in the book of Proverbs, in chapter 30, in verse 24 and 25, he wrote, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. And Solomon was saying, look at the ants and learn a lesson from them that's important for our souls. We're coming to the end of winter. We've had a long time of being with rain and cold and it going dark early, not many hours of daylight. And now spring is beginning to appear. We're starting to see longer days and sunshine and it's getting warmer. And we can look forward to summer. And in summer when we have the school holidays, it's nice to relax and rest and regain our strength. But say Solomon, think about the ants. They're very tiny. It's easy to miss them. But if you see them, they're always rushing about busy. They're looking for food. They're preparing, even in the summer, getting ready for the coming winter. They don't think it's a beautiful day. I'm going to relax in the sun. They are busy preparing for winter when there won't be as much food. They will find things that they can eat now. But some ants are very clever. They don't just find food to eat now and store food. They actually grow food. We've been able to find out using special cameras that they take leaves and other bits of plants into their nests underground where it's warm. Not because they're going to eat them, but because these things will rot down into compost. And the ants use the compost to grow fungi, a bit like mushrooms, and they eat the fungi. But of course, in their nests underground, they can grow fungi, even in winter, because it's warm. If they've brought in enough plant matter to rot down and give the compost they need. And so we see a picture from them about them working hard to make sure there's enough food for all the ants in their colony. And that is a picture for us. We need to think about the things we need. Now we may think, oh, it doesn't matter. I know that one day when I die, I will have to face the Lord God in judgment. I will have to give an answer for what I've done with my life and all the wrong things I've done. And you may know that we can't take our own sin away. You may know that we cannot do the right things that we need to do to earn God's blessing. But you may be thinking, yes, but I can wait until I'm old and I can repent and seek the Lord then. But Solomon says, no, learn from the ant. Don't put it off. Be diligent. Be wise. Seek the Lord now, find forgiveness, find new life in your soul as a gift from the Lord. You can't earn God's blessing. Seek his forgiveness now. 
No, wait until you're old. I hope we'll all live to be old. But we may not. We don't know what will happen. And also, we don't know what will happen in our lives. We think we're going to have everything go smoothly and be happy. But we can't be sure of that. There are lots of sad things happen in this world. And if those things do happen to us, will we face them on our own and have to work out for ourselves how to deal with them? Or will we have found forgiveness from the Lord? Will we be being led by him, being guided by his word and finding that he's able to bless and keep us and bless us through difficulties? Let's think about these things. Let's think about the ants and let's learn from them. There are three other things that Solomon says we can learn from them. And I'd like to speak about those in future weeks. But for now, children, think about the ant and seek the Lord while you're young. Thank you for listening. Now, before we have our Sunday school lesson, it's time to sing our chorus for today which is, there's a way back to God. children you've been learning uh, for the last few weeks about the last night of the Lord Jesus' life and uh, all the dreadful things that happened to him uh, in those closing hours of his life so first of all you heard about how he was taken and brought before the religious leaders and how he was tried before them and this all happened at night didn't it in the dark when there's nobody around to see what was happening and nobody to help him and no one to defend him as they ought to and, and stick up for him so we heard how the religious leaders um, took him by night and set him before them and then um, passed a sentence upon him saying that he dared to call himself the son of God that was his sin and his crime and they said he deserved to die because he dared to call himself God's son. But he didn't, they didn't have the power to put him to death, so he was taken away and brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. The Romans were the rulers over the Jews at that time. And Pontius Pilate alone had the power to set Jesus free or to condemn him to death, even though actually his powers, all of his powers given to him by God and he didn't know that but he chose actually not to save the Lord Jesus. He wanted to, he was a wicked man but he saw that the Lord Jesus was pure and good and holy and he wanted to save him but he wasn't uh, brave enough, he didn't want trouble from the Jews so he brought a bowl of water didn't he and he washed his hands publicly in front of the Jews and all the crowds and said I'm not guilty of this innocent man's death his blood be upon you you are the guilty ones now sadly that wasn't wholly true because Pilate was just as guilty as the Jews he did have the authority anyway to save the Lord Jesus but he chose not to because he didn't want the bother of the Jews being angry and upset and the trouble that would cause. So the Lord Jesus was taken away. He was very cruelly treated then by the Roman soldiers who made fun of him and bullied him and hit him and took, treated him very cruelly and put a crown of thorns upon his head and treated him in a most a horrible way. And yet the Lord Jesus 
bore it all so patiently and so silently, never speaking a word back, never striking out, and showing us um, a perfect way of behaving when people treat us cruelly and unkindly and unjustly. And then after that, the Lord Jesus was led away. Now, he couldn't be crucified in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was a beautiful city with a temple in it. It was the place where God was worshipped. And people who died as criminals could not be put to death in that beautiful city because then they might spoil it. So people who were going to die uh, were taken outside of the city. And the Jews might have understood this because in the Old Testament, in the days of Moses, um, a sacrifice of a young bull would be made uh, in front of the, the tent where the Jews, wor the Israelites worshipped the Lord God when they were in the wilderness. And the sacrifice was made, but much of the bull, not all of it, was burnt on the altar and much of it would be taken away. And it mustn't stay inside the camp it, where they were, were camping and living. It must go outside the camp to another place as if it was something unclean because it was after all a sin offering and the Lord Jesus in the same way was a sin offering for the sins of the world and he may not die in Jerusalem he must be taken outside like the bull and taken to a place which in a way was shameful he'd be taken to a hill called Golgotha and we also call it Calvary and there where everything unclean was put, which was outside the city, he would die. So outside the city, the criminals died. Outside the city, the lepers lived. No one wanted them inside the city, did they? In case they spread their horrible disease and plague. And outside the city, all the rubbish was tipped. So everything disgusting and horrible and unclean was put outside of the beautiful city. And this is where the dear Lord Jesus was taken, as if he was horrible and unclean, because he was going to be our sin offering, and it's our sin that's horrible and unclean, not the Lord Jesus. Now you'll know that he was put to death on a cross. This is a Roman way of executing or killing people. He'd be put onto a cross, a wooden cross, like this one. And the Jews also knew that the Bible teaches that anybody who hung on a wooden cross or a tree, anything made of wood, anyone who died like that was cursed of God. That means God didn't appear to love them. It's the opposite of being blessed. They're cursed because they have done something wicked and God is very displeased with them. And the Jews knew that, and the religious leaders who hated Jesus must have thought he's going to die on a cross, he must be hated of God, he can't be God's son. So the Lord Jesus was taken out and made to carry his cross. Now the cross was a heavy wooden thing, and the Lord Jesus had been shamefully treated all night long. He had been bullied and hit and kept awake and treated very badly and he was very weak and very tired by now and he carried the cross a little and then he fell down under the weight of it. It was too heavy for him to carry and so the Roman soldiers uh, saw a man coming towards them. He was a man called Simon from Cyrene, probably a country of Africa and this man was forced to carry the Lord Jesus' cross up to the hill of Calvary in Jesus' place. I don't suppose he wanted to do that shameful thing of carrying a cross, as if he was a criminal, but that's what happened. And when the Lord Jesus got to Calvary, we know the cruel, sad facts that he was nailed onto the cross and the cross was put upright in the ground and on either side, two thieves hung on their crosses, just common, criminals and the Lord Jesus was put between them as if he was a common criminal too, just as bad as they were. 
and over his head on the cross uh, Pontius Pilate had a sign written. It was written in three different languages so everybody could understand it who went past. And it said, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. I don't know whether Pilate meant that slightly sarcastically or whether he actually wondered if it was true, but he put it up there so everybody could see it. This is Jesus. The name Jesus means Saviour and he's the king of the Jews. He's actually the king of all his people, isn't he? All his Christian people. So that sign was true, even if Pontius Pilate didn't really mean it. Now, as Jesus hung there on the cross, how did he appear in the eyes of the religious leaders? Well, he appeared very helpless and very weak. And being a spiteful and cruel people, they were very glad that he was now on that cross and that he was now got, not going to give them any more trouble. And they just couldn't resist as they stood there or went past. They couldn't resist shouting up at him. And they called out foolish things and untrue things. They called out, he saved others, but himself he cannot save. As if he was weak and helpless. Now. They admit that he saved others. He did so many miracles. Why didn't they believe in him for those miracles? Why don't we believe in him for those miracles? He saved others from many sicknesses and many sad difficulties in their lives. He healed them and made them better. And that was just a part of his work, of course. But he cannot save himself. Well, he chose not to save himself. And the religious leaders even said, come down now from that cross and we'll believe in you. That was a cruel taunt, wasn't it? Now the Lord Jesus could have come down from the cross, couldn't he? He had all power, but he chose to stay there because he chose to suffer there for our sins. He would not come down from the cross, but they were too proud and cruel to understand that. And sadly, that fact is withheld from many people's eyes even today. Why was Jesus on the cross? Now, at the middle of the day, at 12 o'clock, the Lord Jesus had been on the cross uh, probably since nine o'clock in the morning, for the next three hours until three o'clock when he died, a terrible darkness came over the land. I think this must have been quite frightening and, and strange. The land became very, very dark and the people couldn't really see the Lord Jesus' shape on the cross easily anymore because it was so dark and we believe that was because the Lord God was hiding from us really the full extent of the Lord Jesus' terrible sufferings. They weren't just physical sufferings where the nails were in his hands and feet, much more than that there was the suffering for our sin that the Lord Jesus was bearing. As if he was in hell, suffering hell for us so that we might be forgiven and, and set free. And towards the end, just before the end of that terrible three hours, the Lord Jesus let out a, a very sad cry that I find one of the saddest verses of the Bible where he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me or left me? No longer was the Lord God close to him. No longer did he feel like his heavenly father. It was as if God was not there anymore and the Lord Jesus was separated from him. And that moment really proves to us or shows to us that our sin is so awful it separates us from God. And for that moment the Lord Jesus too was separated from God. Now after that dreadful cry, he cried one more thing, and this is a triumphant cry, and a cry of surprising strength, because the Lord Jesus was dying and had been terribly weakened, but he cried out in a loud voice, it is finished. Now, wonderful words, not meaning my life is finished, though he did give up his soul just after that, but meaning it is finished, the payment for our sin, for, for the sins of the world, is 
finished and accomplished now. And then the Lord Jesus, having finished that work he came to do, gave up the ghost or gave up his soul uh, and died. Now, why did he die? We have that on our, our, our picture, on our visual aid. Why did the dear Lord die? Now, people don't seem to know why, do they often? It's, it's terribly sad that people don't even think about this, but we know why he died. Firstly, he died because he loved us. It was love that brought him down from heaven to come and die for the sins of his people. He died because he loved us. Greater love has no man than this, that they lay down their lives for another. And that's what the Lord Jesus did. We know he died to pay the price of our sin. That was why he was there. All the Old Testament sacrifices show that someone must come and be a, a true sacrifice for sin and pay for it and take it away so that God could forgive it. He couldn't have forgiven it if the Lord Jesus hadn't paid for it, children. He died to make us fit for heaven. He lived a perfect life. We can't live a perfect life. However hard we try, we can't do it. We can't make ourselves pleasing in God's eyes. But the Lord Jesus is pleasing in the Lord's God's eyes. He lived a perfect life, children. Absolutely perfect. And he will give that perfect life to you like as if you were clothed in his goodness and righteousness. God will look at you like that if you become a Christian. And last of all, of course, as we sing in the hymn, he died to let us into heaven, to unlock the gates of heaven and to let us in. We can't get to heaven any other way, children. There is no other way. You won't get there by being good. You won't get there by trying to deny yourself and live a perfect life. It just isn't possible. And anyway, what can you do with your sin? Now, think about these things. The Lord Jesus is the only person in the whole history of the world who has done something that can still affect you and me. Come to the Saviour. You will know that these things are true. And the Lord Jesus will put great joy and happiness in your heart when you know that he's died for you and taken all that guilt of your sin away. It's a very wonderful thing. It, although he died nearly 2,000 years ago, it's a wonderful thing that today we can prove that and find it out for ourselves and find the joy of being saved by the Lord Jesus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us for our online Sunday School. We hope that you're all well and um, we're pleased that those of you who've uh, been off school um, will hopefully be able to go back very shortly. Um, for the next week or two, uh, Sunday School will remain online, um, but we are uh, considering when and how we will be able to reopen the Sunday School in the chapel. Now let's finish our time together by praying to the Lord God. Dear Lord, our God and loving Heavenly Father, we come and uh, thank Thee for the Lord Jesus. We thank Thee that He was uh, willing to come and uh, to die on the cross for us, to take away our sins. Lord, we um, pray that we would uh, each understand uh, what this means for us and uh, that we would um, ask Him to be our Saviour and our Heavenly Friend and that he would forgive us our sins, that we might walk with him and uh, follow him all the days of our life, and uh, that we might be uh, blessed in uh, being with him in heaven. Lord, we pray that you would uh, be with us this week, we pray, uh, and help us all in the things that you have given us to do. We ask all of these things in the Lord Jesus' precious name. Amen.